Jeff Slauson here from 19 News Now at the 19 News Digital Desk. During the eclipse day, many different schools, organizations wanted to use that as a way to be able to gather some scientific data. Uh, Purdue University Fort Wayne decided that that was going to be what they were going to do as well. So they put up, I believe they said 10 different weather balloons that were going to go to various parts of the country to be able to gather different data to realize or figure out what effect that potentially could have on many different systems. All of them returned except for three. One that never got off the ground, one that crashed into a creek, and another that is still missing somewhere in Lake Erie. Now, I want to give you a look at exactly what these weather balloons look like here. Uh, so the balloon's on top, and there's a parachute, and then there's a couple of different systems that are connected to it as well. Uh, we're going to move on. That's what it looks like on the ground. This, again, has crashed somewhere into Lake Erie. So take a look at this. Where green is, is where they still knew it was. Then the yellow portion is when they started to lose contact. And then gr blue is where they believe it could have gone as a result of tides since then. This is a very expensive and important piece of equipment. And now they believe that the balloon is potentially in line with Lorraine. So if anybody notices basically a large white and orange parachute, that is this thing. So what should you do? Well, we actually interviewed somebody from Purdue University, Fort Wayne, about this. A really insane story here. Uh, they break down what they were hoping to get from it and why it'd be nice if people could help locate this balloon. About the eclipse and, and uh, everything that we could learn from it and going into it, what was going to be the role or what was the role of all of you and your department um, with what was going to happen on the eclipse and what you were expecting and hoping to learn? So when we uh, launched the balloon uh, in connection with near space education. Uh, we were wanting to collect data uh, from um, the eclipse pictures, photographs, um, how high the balloon would go, the different effects that the eclipse would have. Um, and it actually, we've got more information daily on different things that have happened um, and how um, just the turning of the eclipse and the moon, uh, how it did affect our, our data that we've already collected. Now, unfortunately, that balloon um, didn't necessarily make it home. Can you uh, explain for those that are unfamiliar kind of what happened there? Um, so uh, we were supposed to be landing in Bowling Green, um, and it kept going. And so we kind of, we were also uh, retrieving another balloon that was in the area. So we went ahead and got that one. We were waiting, and then uh, it was over the bay. And so we kept waiting for it to go across that, and then it went into Lake Erie, and we just watched it, and then it just blooped. So, um, which um, we're assuming it is in Lake Erie, um, but the wonderful outpour that we've had from everybody has just been amazing in trying to find this for us, just to just to collect the important data that we're doing and the photographs that that are part of this, and so. It's just an amazing project. So you said you believe it is in Lake Erie. Uh, is there like a general area of Lake Erie, a general portion of it where you yes. feel the most confident? Um, with the information that we have and following the tracker, um, it was off straight off of Lorraine. Um, and, you know, we're hoping with just the balloon staying up, if the water's cold enough, that the, might not pop the smaller balloon and it would float for a while. Uh, the payload is only six pounds, so it's not truly heavy to sink, but it could if it gets water logged. Um, so we're just we're just kind of hoping to retrieve it. And the last question is for anybody that does find it, if they do, mm -hmm. what are they supposed to do? So you can contact the Lorraine Police Department. Um, or the Coast Guard. They're all been a part of this and they've been wonderful. So yeah, if you do locate it, obviously they'd want to know. But again, I wanna pull up the maps associated with this because essentially what happened is that thing went missing right in the harbor. Let me uh, pull that part up here. There we go. So you'll see where this had gone. Rice Island's right here, Muddy Creek Bay, which is not necessarily as well known as Sandusky Bay. Uh, that's where it basically started to flow to. They had anticipated that it would go down uh, it didn't, and then it just kept going. This is what it looks like again, and this is what it looks like from the air. So if you recognize this, if you're in the Lorraine area, or if you're just along Lake Erie, they believe it is now drifted around Lorraine. There's a chance that it could come ashore uh, closer to Cleveland as well. So if you see this on the ground, 
give Lorraine police a call or wherever you are, give that police department a call to let them know that you have recovered it. This is gonna give a lot of information back uh, to Purdue University, Fort Wayne, but also it's just a crazy story nonetheless. All right, we'll have much more on this and other stories of the day tonight on 19 News. But first, we have our coverage at 7 o'clock and 7.30 over on the CW. So I'll see you there. For now, I'm Jeff Sloss of 19 News. Have a great day and a great night. Much more to come both on air and online. Nineteen News, now streaming on Samsung Smart TV.